Hey guys, welcome back to another video in the series of Python interview questions for DevOps. And in today's video, we are going to talk about two very important programs. So as you can see on my screen, today is day 9th and we are going to talk about a palindrome number and a perfect number. So let us understand what exactly is a palindrome number. So let us consider a number 1 to 1 or a number 1 1 1. So what does it indicate? It indicates that a palindrome number is a number which reverse is equal to the original number means the number itself. For example, if you take 121 and if you reverse it, it is again the same 121. So it is exactly the palindrome number. And the next question would be, what exactly is a perfect number? So we have to find out and we have to write a program for that. And this was one of those questions that was asked to me as well long back. So you can prepare this program. So what exactly is a perfect number? A perfect number is a positive integer that is equal to the sum of its positive divisors, excluding the number itself. Let's take an example. So if we take an example six, its divisors are 3, 2, 1 as well. 1 is always a divisor for every number, every positive number. And then when you add them, 3 plus 2 plus 1, it will be 6. The another example for this uh, could be 28. 28 is also a perfect number. So we are going to try, uh, we are going to find out that in today's these two programs. So uh, again, I'm requesting if you're new over here and have not subscribed my channel yet, kindly do so. So without further ado, let's dive right into the demo part. Okay. So as you can see on my screen that this is the program for palindrome number. Now, if you have been following this series, if you remember, there was a program that was a reverse num program that we discussed the last time. Okay, so it is kind of based on that. So almost 90% of the program is exactly the same. All we are doing over here is we are just comparing these two over here. So let us understand from the very beginning. What I'm trying over trying to do over here is I'm taking a number as an input, enter any number. And then we are making a call to reverse number. Okay, so reverse number is exactly the definite uh, the function that's going to work on it. In that, the main thing is rev, which is the reverse short form of reverse. We are taking it as zero, and we are comparing the number which will come from here because this is the driver code. And when we are going to make a call, the number would come over here. And then while number does not equal to zero, the transition happens from this place to this place. The control goes from this place to this place, from right to left, not left to right. And then it is going to take the modulus operator. This is modulus operator, modulo of the number. For example, if the number is 121, then it is going to take one. And then it is going to multiply that, uh, the rev, which is zero right now into 10. For the next iterator, iteration, it is going to do for something else. And then after that, it is going to take the floor division for the number. So if your number is 121, the floor division would be 12. And for example, 15 divided by two, then it would be 7.5, then it would be seven. So that's going to be the number. And the next iteration, it is going to change. After that, we are going to return the rev until and unless the num does not equal to zero. Once it is done, we are going to take the value in this rev and then we are going to compare these. So rev equal to equal to num, the number is a palindrome. Otherwise the number is not a palindrome. So the only thing is I want you to go through the video which we discussed in the last time, the reverse num. I've explained everything with the iteration. So that would be a refresher for you. And then what we are going to do is we're going to compare this exactly the same program, just these two things we are doing over here. All right, so let us run this program. So zero one hit tab enter so it is asking me to enter any number all right so let us do that so let me give 121 the number is a palindrome because 121 is exactly equal to 121 in reverse let's just run, run it again with some number one two three four is it a palindrome no it is not so the number is not a palindrome so let us give one more example of one 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 two two one 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 and let's see if that works number is a palindrome. All right. So I hope you guys have understood this part. So let me just clear this and take a pause over this video. Try to do iterations on a pen and paper and then understand this program. This is exactly to this, this same to this reverse num program, which we discussed in the last video in this series. Okay. Now let us understand the perfect number. Now, how do we understand the perfect number? What we are doing over here is I'm not writing any function over here. Uh, I want you guys to do it. So I'm just giving you the logic for this so that you can spend some time and do it. Okay, so what we are doing over here is we are taking an input from a user. So if I run this program, so let me just type 02, it is going to ask me a number. So I'm going to enter a number. Okay, as soon as I do six, 
it is going to tell me that it is a perfect number why because 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6 again i gave an example of 28 right so let us understand about 28 let us test it yes it is also a perfect number let me clear this and give another value 14 it is not a perfect number so now let us understand how this works on 6 so that you can understand the iterations now i'll talk about the iterations over here i'm taking a for loop the sum is just because i need i would need something to be zero and something need to be added to that number so that's why i'm taking it zero for i in range from one till number divided by two why i'm doing it two now consider a scenario now try to understand this this way so if there is a number six as an input and we are going to do floor division for it it is going to give us value 3 okay so why 3 because we are going to uh, in this we are adding 1 here as well right so if we add over here the so 3 plus 1 equal to 4 so my range will be going from 1 till 4 and you already know that in a for loop the range goes from 1 till the number just not not exactly till the number it just one before the number so this will run for one two and three and not for four okay so let you have understood the line number three now what will happen and if you can ask me that why i'm running this uh, till why why i'm dividing it by two i can run this till the number exactly right if i'm going to six then i can run it till six there is no point in running till six let us understand why an interviewer can ask you this question as well that why are you running why aren't you running it till the number why are you running it till half of it because i'll give you a scenario if 3 divided by uh, divided by 2 then what is going to happen over here it is going to give a floor division of 3 so now even if you after the number after exactly the half of it when you divide it you'll get exactly the half of it after that any number won't be able to give you the result as 0 the number won't be divisible uh, won't be a divisor for example if you have 6 then half is 3 right and then 3 plus 1 is 4 after that 4 won't be a divisor of that number after that 5 5 won't be a divisor of that number in in, in that case of 28 when you when you divide it by 14 uh, divided by 2 it gives you value 14 when you add 1 to it which will be 15 then 15 won't be a divisor of divisor of 28 similarly with 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 till 28 so are you trying to understand over here what exactly is happening over here is we are reducing the number of iterations we are reducing the complexity of this program by just by half of it if if you running uh, if you talk about about a perfect number which is more than 100 and if you divide it by 2 it will make that value just in half and it will reduce the time complexity uh, for you so that's what we are going to do over here so take a pause over here and try to understand what i just said and, and whenever an interviewer can ask uh, whenever he'll ask he or she will ask you that why are we doing this you can answer exactly the same that what i just told you all right now let us understand what is happening over here in rem in the first iteration rem equal to num percentile modulus division by i so when this happens what will happen over here so let me just type it so rem what it will become what is num right now num is 6 right 6 modulus operator for i i is 1 right now what it will give a value so now it is comparing that if rem equal to equal to 0 obviously rem would be equal to equal to 0 because 1 is divisible and what these guys are doing sum equal to sum plus 1 so what exactly my value for sum is 0 and what it is giving 0 plus 1 so right now the value of sum let me put it over here so that you guys don't get confused sum the value of sum will become what 1 okay this happens for the first iteration now what will happen in the second iteration let me go to second so now the value of rem is 6 divisible this one 
divided by now my iteration value is 2 okay now what it will give it will give 0 only right so my condition would be fulfilled which condition this condition would be fulfilled and it will come in this if now what will happen over here the value of sum in the previous iteration was 1 right it is going to add the i now this one and what is i right now i is 2 so it will give me a value 3 in the third iteration what will happen the rem equal to 6 modulus operator or modular division of 3 will give 0 yes my condition would be fulfilled then sum equal to now my sum value is 3 in the previous iteration 3 plus what is my i right now in the third iteration 3 equal to 6 now what will happen in the fourth iteration there is no fourth iteration why because this condition is not fulfilled right now because it was running till 4 and whenever there is a last range it won't go till there it will just go 1 before that okay so this ends over here so right now my value of sum is 6 and what I'm doing is I'm comparing in the seventh line sum equal to num 6 equal to equal to 6 yes exactly the same and that's why it is a perfect number so I hope you guys have understood it I'm putting it like this you can take a pause over here take first iteration into consideration then second iter iteration into consideration and then the third iteration into consideration and that's how you understand the program okay now i want to give you a, give you a task take a number 28 and then try to do it for that and try to create iterations and on the halfway within 13 14 iteration you would be able to understand what exactly is going on here and that would be good for you so i hope you guys have understood this part and if there is any question feel free to comment below we will address that also i would like to uh, make a request that try to understand the program before executing anything try to make a program in the sense uh, write down like what exactly do we need and try to write in pen uh, using pen and paper that this is something that we are going to do and what would be the logic and after that try to program in your visual studio code or any sort of editor or your IDE. so guys thanks for watching the video and if you're new over here kindly subscribe to the channel because it supports me and i'll see you in the next one